Hello, my name is Dr. George Machaki and welcome back. This is a continuation of the series we're doing in understanding business organizations or corporations. Today we're going to be talking about human resource management and labor relationship. This one hour that I'll be discussing that, uh, and you're, you know, uh, remember you already had, you already read the material, you utilized uh, 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 authors or publishers' interactive software, so you kind of have a general idea. Some of you already uh, have some exposures with uh, HR, either getting a job or working there, so you have a general concept of what uh, uh, human resource management uh, uh, in, encompasses. Here it's just going. I'm going to go real quickly. Uh, we already discussed this in the class. Uh, you know, either with myself, it's another class you take with another instructor. So you you, you have a good understanding. So let's go. Uh, you know, you you have the concept maps available to you. You will normally I provide my concept maps uh, are the second tier. So you're to add on your own words while you're uh, reading my concept maps and see. Oh, how did Dr. George apply? what we read and put it into this conceptual map or this uh, uh, outline, okay? So uh, human resource management. And that's, I'm gonna make this just a little bit bigger. Remember, follow along with this. Uh, view, uh, uh, 200, you can see it, okay. So if I'm looking at the uh, human resource management, uh, HR management or personnel or HR, uh, as it's sometimes called, the author did a nice job on that. The set of organization activities directed at attracting developing, maintaining an effective workforce. Remember, they're the individuals who bring him into the company. As a manager or different uh, uh, leaders, they ha uh, they'll work with this individual, but they're finding the right person that fits into this company with the skill sets, and he or she has the cultural and emotional intelligence to be able, or social skills for lack of better words, to be able to work within uh, this organization. That's what HR is out there. They're like a uh, looking out there to make sure they find the right individual. Okay, now when you look at HR, why it's so important? Human capital, you know, we talked about financial capital, everything else, resources. Human capital is the strength of any organization. So it reflects the investment in attracting and retaining, motivating, and effective workforce. I pay you well, but I want the best individuals that I could afford. Sometimes I can't afford the extremely best. I may drop down to uh, above average depending on how much I can afford. But for my money or my investment, I want the best so I could have this individual that will help the organization grow. And he or she will be able to provide a service and not only the organization grow, but they will also be able to grow as the organization grows with skill sets that they could keep with the organization if I'm treating them properly or skill sets they could take to another organization that are transferable. Okay, so now the other thing they talk about HR, they're looking at talent management. Recognizing people uh, uh, represent, uh, uh, recognize that people represent a portfolio of talents that can be managed and used best targeted organizational success. You know, I'm a talker. I'm an outgoing individual. I'm a creative person. I may be a reserve individual. We all have talents. All of us have, you know, we all have our signature. We're noted for one thing, but we do a multiple of other things. That what mo that's what we've learned from other chapters motivates us. Now, human resources. Here's the talent that I have within my organization. How could I maximize that talent? Not only for growth for my employees, but also for growth for my uh, uh, for for the business. Okay. So now HR planning. Remember, we talked about planning. You also, even here in HR, will be utilizing smart goals. You, there's two parts of this. Remember, for your business plan that you're doing for my course, or you may be doing an assignment, they're gonna, uh, the instructor is going to uh, ask you to uh, uh, write up a job description and a job specification. For my course, I want one job description for the uh, business feasibility plan you're working uh, doing on me, for me, on me. For me, I want one job description and one uh, and the job specification for that job for one of your main key individuals. As businesses grow, you should have job descriptions for all. If you're a small business uh, uh, company or uh, you are the HR manager, take myself or other instructors at community colleges will help you develop more uh, job descriptions. You know, this is just like a, a quick overview. It's one chapter out of, I think, 17 or 20 chapters out of, uh, out of the book. In each one of these chapters that I'm discussing now are full-fledged 
courses. You can look me up on uh, at the college or uh, some YouTube that I have out there. Some of them are older, and you know the concepts are the same. It's just that the material hasn't been updated for what's going on now. Okay, so job description. Job description. List the duties and responsibilities of the job. Make sure you have that. It's working conditions where you're going to be working at. You know, I mean, uh, nights, hours, uh, uh, manufacturing, office, whatever. Uh, tools, materials, and equipment that they should either provide or that you will be providing them and information used to perform the, the job the description okay now your job specification as i indicated before and we're going to be uh, talking later on about the equal opportunity and discrimination this is where the uh, uh, the government looks to see if you're discriminatory against a certain class of individuals okay list skills and ability to this job and other credentials and qualification needed to perform the job effectively. We discussed this in detail in the classroom, uh, and, and the author did an excellent job explaining this in a simplistic way that you could understand. Okay, a, 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 a human uh, HR planning process, you know, you conduct a job analysis, basically what do I need, where uh, uh, where's their shortfall, where is uh, there gonna be an opening, even now or in the future, and I'm preparing for that. So I'm looking at the demand for the labor, I forecast internal supply, maybe I have that talent within the organization. Nowadays, it's not just a file, you're on a computer, uh, a software that it says, I'm looking for someone who has marketing skills, I'm looking for someone who has construction skills, boom, George Machaki pops up, or your name pops up, whatever, okay? Forecast external supply, so I'm looking, what do I have the individuals in here, or do I look, do I have the individuals outside? You know, there may be a shortest outside also, I may want to do some additional training to make sure my internal resources are more effective, or at least be able to compete if I can't, or uh, to help me fill the position if I can't uh, have adequate outside. Look, most companies looking at the internal and the external when they post a job in your organization. That's to make sure that they have the best employee for that position. So when you see the posting, you have a, an edge if you're a good, active employee, remember? Because it's your personality that they already know going for the job. Now, Going outside, if you're coming from the outside, they can say, hey, this person, you better be a good communicator, have a good resume, be able to respond to the questions, everything we talked about, utilizing some of the programs or some of the list of questions that was provided in class by myself or other instructors uh, that are teaching this course, okay? And then develop a plan to match it. So sometimes you may say, hey, I got an internal individual, but they don't have the skill set, they're only missing one or two things. Should I go out and get somebody brand new or should I help within there that helps the motivation that helps the skill uh, within the you know the morale of your organization but you always want to make sure you don't want to always have everything internal new people you bring in brings in new ideas changes the culture gives you a different perspective helps you the organization look at it in different ways you know we're going to talk about diversity and how a lot of companies are trying to uh, uh, maximize that diversity as a strength for the organization that's one of the strengths a lot of companies have one of the strength that the u.s uh, has is that we're a very diversified uh, workforce that gives us creativity and new ways to not only come up with ideas but to solve problems okay all right so now you have that da, 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 da. now we're going to go forecasting demand Okay, forecasting, and, and I already covered that. You know, number of employees, uh, external people that are available. You know, there's a, I was working with for a, a trenching company, and we went out uh, out there, and they couldn't find any engineers. They're out in the in Oklahoma. They're out in the middle, you know, not that far away from the biggest from Oklahoma City, maybe 25 miles. But it's not like a, 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 an overnight drive. You, it's it's a fairly good drive, and they couldn't find qualified individuals. They were offering homes, everything else. Because remember, they couldn't. So what they did, they started training their individuals internally they're already living here let's utilize this force for the individuals and help them get their education college degree and also help the organization uh, 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 find the individuals uh, to uh, satisfy their needs as the organization was growing and more technical uh, abilities and attributes from their employees is required even for the manufacturing sector okay now replacement chart or what a lot of times when i was going through school succession planning if something happens to george who's going to fill them don't think that you're invincible that no one could take your place trust me you're going to somebody else will come right in so at higher levels, usually succession plan is more at higher levels, manages plans for specific people and positions. List 
each important managerial position, they basically, it's like a chart. Who has here, if something has, who's the next uh, uh, person to succeed is something that happened in an orderly manner. Because he or she has the skills and ability to fit in there. And does it meet the company's strategic goal? Does he or she have the skill set? Or do we have to look outside to bring somebody else because the culture we want to change? And maybe there isn't that person that has exactly the skill sets to bring this organization forward in the future. Now, who's qualified now? So you have a list of individuals. And, you know, and even though they're qualified, doesn't necessarily mean they're going to get the job. It means that they are in there. They could have some personality conflict, or they may have their mannerism, or the way they deal with people. There's a lot of other attributes, and then also the little politics in there. Let's not forget it. HR tries to stay very, uh, tries not to get involved in politics, and if anything else, tries to dissolve any kind of pol political influence as best as they can. Okay, employee information system. When I look at the employee information system, when I was, you know, I've been I'm a little baby boomer, so I've been around a little bit. So when I was coming, I had a file. They look at my file. My file's like this. And when somebody pulled out my file, oh my God, he must have been a troublemaker because who has a file like this? I went to school. I did a lot of activities, so I had a lot of things. Remember, anything you do positive, your manager could put into your file, or you could request to be put into your HR file, your main file. Uh, uh, that the company holds on you. There's three files. Right now, I'm not going to go into that. You know, as an individual supervisor, I carry an active file. The, your local office may have a file, but the corporate will have everything that all those offices has. Hopefully, it has everything. Nowadays, it's almost there because it's a computer system. What skills does George have? George got his uh, education. George was born in uh, uh, Germany. George is a Vietnam vet. All those things, you know, when we talk about later on hiring and bringing individuals, he's got his master's, he's got his bachelor's, he's got his uh, 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 doctor's, and different things. He's been in the workforce, he's worked in different departments. Those are skill sets when you start going higher, higher. You're on an individual. We are have our discipline or several disciplines that we are strong in, but we have to be able to function and understand how all the other disciplines work interactively at a conceptual level as you move higher and higher. So if you've been in those departments or you're missing some departments and it's critical to your organizational success, they may assign you as a, a manager or a district manager or something or a supervisor in that department. Remember, if you're uh, out to go, I was uh, at an engineering department, I do not have an engineering degree. Mine is management and marketing. But when I look at the engineering degree, I had a direct report who had that. From a construction background that I came, I understood uh, the engineering aspect. I may not have all the formal training, uh, but I understand I understand conceptually how they work, conceptually, uh, uh, you know, the cost and everything else that's uh, involved in that. From construction, sales, engineering, now that gave me a, a larger, uh, for succession planning purposes, where I can move up into the middle and uh, a higher uh, managerial position which I did, okay? So make sure when you go around, check your inventory. You know, hey, can I check it? Don't uh, assume they have it. Remember, they might have put it to the wrong person. Make sure they have everything good. Remember, your HR has your good and your bad. Hopefully you have more good than bad. And we all, you know, if you've been for a company for a little while, you may have some things you might uh, uh, not too proud of. But to look at overall, we all grow as we uh, uh, mature with the organization. Okay, now the legal context of uh, HR. Now, I'm not going to worry about too much of the dates. All I have to know is there's a law out there. Civil, uh, uh, Title Seven forbids discrimination in all areas of employment, such as hiring, uh, uh, opportunities for advancement, termination against members for a certain protected class of individuals on race, color, gender, uh, religious belief, or national origin. Now, some of the adverse thing of... Um, what do you call the civil rights or uh, things the impact was basically uh, impact on minorities and women such individuals meet or pass a requirement rate of less than 80% rate of injury all this adverse impact if they're going to look at it that there's a cause for the federal government to say hey you're not playing fairly with a certain uh, uh, identified uh, class of individuals that you're supposed to assess not that you know they had the same skill sets and everything else you had to be fair and they're looking at that as a certain race or a certain class of individual that 80 percent less than 80 percent can't pass the exam there may be some kind of discriminatory language in your tests or the way you're evaluating an individual doesn't mean they can't pass it it's, you know, uh, it's just that they weren't exposed to that terminology uh, for whatever rationale 
Okay, so you do look at it. And you, as a company, you should try to make a, 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 an honest effort to try to find out what areas you can modify, not to just give them special treatment to that uh, uh, identified uh, class of individual, but it means it's fair to everyone, okay? All right, Equal Opportunity Commission, EEO, EEOC, enforcing Title VII. They're basically the legal action for the uh, law. Age discrimination is prevents organizations from discriminating against uh, uh, older workers. It outlaws discrimination against pe uh, people over 40. My son got, uh, uh, when he was younger, just uh, I think 20, and somebody fired him. He says, you're too young and uh, too immature or whatever. I forgot what they said. But he said, ah, just age discrimination. He says, too young. No, it's over 40. Uh, but uh, you, you know you may have a case, but not uh, you can't use age discrimination against that. Okay, equal opportunity, uh, uh, legally mandated non discrimination in employment on base of race, creed, sex, or national origin. Everything you're hearing here is the same thing that the college, uh, the community college, and uh, all four year universities look at yourself instead of an employee. Look at yourself as a student. You are protected by that. Uh, community colleges, especially community colleges, do not discriminate against age, uh, 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 race, or religion, or uh, social class. Okay, now firm of action is intentionally seeking and hiring people from groups that were underrepresented in, in the organization. And this is a court order mandate, spells out employment goals for underused groups. Qualified, you know, handicapped individual. There's people out there, you know, just because I'm handicapped and because uh, I need a bigger screen doesn't mean I can't be effective on the work. I'm dyslexic, so I turn things around, but it doesn't mean I can't be effective. I just have to understand here's the limitation, or as in my case, I use that as a strength because I could uh, uh, connect the dots, so it's good for process mapping. So, uh, okay, remember. You have to have, this is a court mandated. How are you going to bring this group that you were underrepresented for whatever reason, that, you know what I mean? The court saying you have to do it. So you'll have to find individuals, either train and find them. And sometimes uh, uh, the requirements may be a little less than what you would do underneath a diverse, uh, diversity program, bringing individuals to. Veterans Readjustment uh, Act, and it's, you know I fall in that, required to act firmly in hiring Vietnam veterans. Uh, I know, I put them for the jobs. A lot of times you go in there, you never know if they're going to hire you're a veteran the best. I don't, you know, I never go out there and say, hey, you didn't hire me because you're a vet. Uh, hopefully they have enough Vietnam vets in all levels, not only just in the teaching but or in the, uh, the, the the classification you're at, but all levels within your organization. That's where Walmart got into the trouble with women. They had a lot of women and minorities at the lower end, in the middle end, but very few at the top end. You say, hey, that balance of individuals that uh, the company has a diverse uh, uh, total all should be equal going up. You know, what I'm looking at a ratio of percentage. Should be. Doesn't mean uh, it uh, necessarily is always achievable. I used to work for combat, and we were having problems uh, 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 finding women to uh, repair power lines, kind of pull. I mean, you know, I mean, we tried our best, everything else. So the, the government there says, okay, we understand you don't have enough women in certain fields of your con uh, in your construction area, but other fields you should be able to do it. You know, if you're doing like uh, uh, doing electrical work, that's uh, just regular electrical type of work, like or. Uh, you know, uh, in a building and everything else. There you should have those numbers. There, as long as you're making the effort to get them, they're not gonna, uh, you're not violating any rules, okay? Now, Pregnancy Discrimina uh, Discrimination Act forbids discrimination against women who are pregnant. Uh, Americans with Disabilities, uh, uh, Americans with Disabilities Act forbids discrimination on basis of disabilities requires employees to provide reasonable accommodation for disabled employees. It's not that I have to put a whole life support system. What, you know, I'm a small business, maybe, um, I think the court's ruled, and I can't remember, and you, uh, you know, I'm just going, let's say I'm a small business, they say, hey, uh, an account of, uh, uh, what do you call it, a reasonable accommodation, maybe $2,000, $3,000. Not, a, a, you know, $20,000, $100,000. I don't even make that much in a year for a lot of businesses. Accommodated, provide reasonable accommodation, larger screen uh, 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 headphones for those who uh, have a uh, 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 hard of hearing. Uh, are we okay? All right. The Civil Rights Act of 1991 amended to the original Civil Rights Act makes it easier to bring discrimination uh, a lawsuit. Limit, but the, here's the thing, it makes it easier for you to uh, file discrimination, but the uh, the catch on that was that it limited the amount of punitive damage award in those lawsuits. Okay, compensation and benefits. 
There's a lot in conversation of benefits. Let's just get, these are just a general, larger uh, uh, picture for a high view picture. First Standards Act basically sets a minimum wage and requires a minimum, uh, the payment of overtime rates uh, for uh, for work in excess of 30 hours. If you get paid by the hour, that's not an issue. Who's exempt is minimum hourly wages and overtime positions, salary profici- uh, professionals, my, myself, uh, executive, administrative employees. So sometimes when you have the administrative secretary, she may put more hours, or he may put more hours. He or she is just a position, may put more hours. But then they try to play games as your administrative and you're in salary. Salary means I get the same pay all the time. I should. I, I'm expected to work a little more than forty hours as a high, maybe ten hours uh, over. You know, so fifty hours part of my salary is all compensating my base salary, not. 20, 25, 30 hours over my base salary, unless I'm the higher executive, because then they're basically hiring me for as a professional and, uh, for the job, as we're going to be talking a little bit when we go uh, explaining the benefits. Okay, Equal Pay Act requires that men and women be paid the same amount. It's a little different than comparable work, and we'll talk about that a little bit, for doing the same job. Uh, to, uh, sometimes some companies try to, to, to circumvent the law by uh, different job titles and pay rates for men and women who perform the same work uh, are also illegal. Uh, uh, basing and employees pay on... Se- now here, on senior... Now remember, I came from a union, so when I talk about the union, I'm never bashing a union. I, I was on both sides, okay? Uh, Brotherhood of Electrical Union. Uh, uh, basing the employees pay on seniority or performance is legal. I could pay them more. But I offer that to everyone. Everyone's got to be seniority. It's just the rules of the union. So when we talk about the uh, Wagner Act and everything else, it gives unions certain uh, uh, benefits. It gives it takes away certain uh, privileges. So the, you know, the, there's rules in the unions. Okay. So when they're looking at the employees paying on seniority is legal, even if it means that the man and the woman are paid different amounts for doing the same job, but they still have the same ability to achieve those. Uh, uh, if it's performance, but seniority just have to be there by the time. Certain benefits are mandatory. Okay, workman's compensation. That means for employees who are injured on a job, you can't sue the company, but they have to pay you something. Part of workman's compensation is that uh, even though if you're an idiot and you do something wrong and you hurt yourself, I as an organization uh, that's insurance I carry on you, I still have to pay uh, uh, to to get you better, and you know, uh, and compensate you for some any kind of loss. Okay. Employees Retirement Social Security Act, all this one does ensure financial security pension. I'm going to go real quick on this. We've already been exposed to this. If not, the author did it real nicely. I'm, I want to go more into the uh, into the, uh, the wages and everything else. Okay, Family Medical Leave Act requires employees to provide up to 12 weeks. There's 12 weeks. There's three months of unpaid leave for family medical. After this, you know, you, you have a lot of companies, I forgot, it's like uh, during the pregnancy, there may be like 30 days, 40, depends on your medical insurance or the policy of the organization that they'll pay. After that, you have by the law, you could say, hey, I want to take three months off uh, unpaid leave. So that means I could fill that position and everything else. But when you come back after the 12 weeks, which is three months, I could have to give you the same job, but it does not necessarily have to be in the same location. I can't keep us opening a lot of times. Let's say I've had three or four people that are maternity leave to keep their business functioning working. I do have to, by law, guarantee you that you will have a job with the same pay grade, same job, same function. Unless there was a reorganization, then we try to find something comparable to what you would have had if you would have been here uh, during that reorganization. Okay? Uh, table of various law and this one here, you know, they, they talked real quick. Title IX, compensation benefit, labor relation, national labor laws, you know, health and safety, uh, OSHA, everything we're going to be talking about. So now labor relations. When you look at labor relations, there are laws how I should work with business, how we should work with unions or different collective bargaining uh, associations within the uh, within the organization. So the National Labor Act, also known as the Wagner Act. Remember, I'm not too much into the years. Eh, I put it in there. I'm not sure what the author, you know, some of the other instructors, if you're just watching this, may put that in there. I'm just looking to make understand what the act is. Know this illegal. Understand here's what I have to do. That's all I need to know. And then if it comes to, to a situation where I have to act on it or uh, uh, something comes up where I have to uh, do something with that act, I'd say, okay, here's the act. Now I get into more detail to see am I in compliance with the law or am I in violation of the law and how do I be 
become compliant with the rules. Okay, procedures for employees to vote to have a union. You know, you know, and it's fifty percent or forty percent. There's different procedures. Take me for HR or another instructor for HR. There's two in the uh, seven instructors who teach human resources at the uh, either community colleges. Excellent uh, individuals. You'll be able to do. Uh, they'll go more into detail. That's the whole course is about. Okay, National Labor Relations Board, established by the uh, Wagner Act. This is basically the enforcing arm of that uh, act. Labor Relations Act, also known as the Taft-Hartley Act, passed. Uh, uh, it limits the power to the union. So basically, it gives uh, certain things that the union, you know, it used to be during the, uh, the union could strike and could cripple the, not only the business, but could cripple the whole nation because of an asset or something that is um, critical for everyday survival, for lack of a better word, of a nation or, and of its constituents. So national emergency strike provision allows the President of the United States to prevent or end the strike that endangers national security. Now OSHA, Occupational Safety uh, uh, Act, if you do anything, uh, if there's any kind of accident, any kind of injury, you report to OSHA. If you have a consistency of injuries, OSHA comes on to the job. Part of HR is to inform the employees that they are there's OSHA and how to be compliant and what happens if an OSHA inspector comes on the job site that they are to notify the management and then uh, you know, to make sure that you don't put the employee at risk or you put the organization at risk. Okay? So, uh, we require federal law setting and enforcing guidelines for protecting workers from unsafe conditions and potential hazards in the workplace. Other legal assets are sexual harassment uh, defined by EEOC, that's a t a Title IX. Uh, unwelcome sexual advances in the work uh, environment. I think almost every course I talk a little bit about t uh, Title IX. And, and let me go through this. I, we, we discussed this in, in detail at, uh, in my lectures. I know the other instructors most likely did too. Uh, occurs with sufficient frequency to create an abusive work environment. Yeah, and that could be like pictures or just rude comments or something of sexual orientation over and over. Uh, this already uh, uh, is indicated starting into a hostile uh, uh, work environment. An employer is responsible, me, once it's brought up to an employer management, by warning, reprimanding, or firing the harasser. A lot of times they may not know what they're doing. You know, sometimes I think they do, but you still have to give them the benefit of the doubt. And HR comes in there, and HR is usually the one. If I find if an employee comes up to me and says, uh, one of my other employees, one of my other direct reports is uh, uh, acting inappropriately that could justify a Title IX, a sexual harassment case, I will come up to there, I will uh, ask for an information, and I will most likely turn, I will turn that over to my HR, who has a Title IX specialist and investigators, and from that pace, the, uh, I'm out of the picture, so there's no bias, and HR is the one who uh, will uh, do the investigation, do the, uh, and come up with some kind of a conclusion. Yes, there was a violation, or was there insufficient evidence to uh, go further on? After management has that, then you have the option to actually file uh, if you want. But you have to give management the first look at any kind of sexual harassment or discrimination. We may not know it. You have to bring it to our attention first before you file with the EEOC. Okay? Now, so you have uh, uh, quite a pro harassment is harasser offers to exchange something of value for sexual. Now, harasser could be male or female. You know, it could be another gentleman thinks I'm attractive. It could be another woman thinks you're attractive, you're female. It could be uh, you know, uh, anyone who has power and is using that power to get sexual favors is what they're talking about right here. He's an offender. Violation of Title IX. Okay, creation of hostile work environment. A group of male employees uh, 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 who continually make off-color jokes, sexual uh, jokes, lewd comments, perhaps decorate the work environment or appropriate uh, photography. Look, even going to the gym or the locker or anything else, that is unacceptable. Even on your computer, there's policies on there, and a lot of companies have the policy, what's, impro uh, what's uh, uh, inappropriate, what's appropriate behavior, or inappropriate or, uh, uh, messages or uh, postings or pictures you're allowed to have while you're working uh, within the organization. Okay? 
a female colleague uh, who may become uncomfortable working in an environment. Okay, now employment at will, I'm gonna go real quickly, and that's organized should be able to retain or dismiss employees at discretion. I could fire you just because I wanna fire you. Well, I did a good job, I just wanna fire you, get the heck out of your fire. I could that, a lot of employees don't do this uh, bad uh, 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 relationship. Also, the president is gonna go and find some reason why you fired me, discriminatory, or whatever rationale. All right, but but on the flip side, you could quit any time you want. I can't say you don't have to give me notice. You just quit and walk out. I don't want this job. I'm out of here, unless you're in the military. So when you're looking at the employment will, uh, Illinois is one of the states that still has employment will. I think there was a basketball a few years ago. Uh, I forgot what league. They basically locked out and just uh, just fired everyone. It says or fired an individual. Says we we don't want you in the team, uh, and, and they uh, utilize this employment will. Okay, now the Patriot Act, basically the U.S. government, this government, uh, just add to the dictionary, power to investigate. Those who are looking here, remember a lot of students, you got the first tier, so you'll have a Patriot U.S. government, and you don't have this additional. Here's where I want you to write in. The more senses you utilize, the better or the higher probability you'll be able to retain that information so when you go for the exam or when you're going for the next course or you're taking a course of full HR or uh, you're working, you say, I remember something about the Patriot Act. What is that? So remember, you write it in, read it, you listen to me, you write it, you read the book, all those senses, the more senses, the higher probability you'll be a good student and you'll succeed. Okay, so restricts individuals, uh, uh, including ex-cons or aliens, a deemed by the State Department uh, repeatedly provide for acts of t international terrorism. That means you can ineligible to work with potentially dangerous uh, biological agents. A no-brainer, but there's an act out there that gives me for, you know, because I don't want to be discriminated. I didn't hire you for that position and you're on this list. And technically I had to, you know, it's open, but I can't discriminate. And that's what the Patriarch is. I think it was after 9-11. Okay. If you have that concern, okay, so we got that, 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 that. Okay, so let's go over here. We're doing pretty good. Uh, remember, I, I try to keep these underneath an hour. Uh, we talked about that in class, in a lecture, so this is a good quick overview. It ties the pieces of human relations together. And some of you may think, is, hey, do I want to go into human relation? Look, if you want to understand an organization, if you want to grow within a company, no different departments, HR is, uh, is a good avenue to go into. You touch everyone, you're in different departments, you see what's going on, you're in the know of everything that's going on in your organization. Another one is the sales. I'm talking about new uh, employees coming into your organization. There again, you're, you're dealing with other departments, you're selling or marketing or advertising, something that you're in, in an area that you touch every department. What happens if your uh, aspiration going forward, higher up as a new employee, those are areas that you get exposure, good or bad. Bad exposure, there goes your career. Good exposure going up. Bad exposure, eh, questionable, but it have more exposure. Same thing you're looking at if you're looking at presidential debates. Good or bad, that's an exposure. Don't judge a person either. I don't care who you're voting for. Look at the person. Look at the individual. I'd say it could be one of those the days they're off. And you know that's how as a manager, HR is always trying to help the organization keep good employees. But if I made a mistake, they have my advocate, my lawyer, talking to management. Remember their managerial position. They play the advocate role or the mediator role between all employees in the organization. So let me say, hey, George, a good guy just made a mistake. Uh, give him a break. And sometimes I've had that with HR. All of us have something going on, remember. You learn from your errors. Okay, so staffing organization. Manage new employees, internal, uh, uh, you know, from in, uh, from internal, external, selecting. Uh, okay, so I, uh, now I'm looking at staffing. I already got the job posting. I'm looking internal, external. I look at the application forms. Application forms. Most application forms are all electronic. Monster.com. So you either send it as a Microsoft Word or an RTF file. The software out there, I think there's a, 
a resume maker is a company out there not solely one that has uh, 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 short questions has interview questions it has templates on, on different uh, 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 resume formats you could have it has how to follow it has links to all these others uh, what do you call it, uh, internet sites to post your uh, information on. You know, so everything's on there. So remember, internally they know you, externally they don't. So I'm looking at application forms. I either test and, and, or, and interviews, some of the tests or assessments. Polygraph or drug testing depends on the job. Most companies, when you first come in, they always do a drug test. When do I do the drug test? When do I do the polygraph? When do I do all that? I haven't hired you yet. You know, same thing when I do credit checks and references. I haven't hired you yet. After I offer you the job at that time, within the same day, you either go to the larger company or uh, uh, the, the very next day in all these, I start doing the checks or require you to do certain uh, tests. Why spend all that money and you're just a candidate, but I didn't, uh, you're not a potential candidate. You're just in a pool of candidates. I'm trying to uh, make sure I uh, maximize my, uh, my cost. Remember, because hiring individual is a long process. You want to get the right individual. It's time consuming not only for HR, but also for the managers and everyone else that's involved in the interviewing and the testing and finding the final selection. So when I get that individual, I want him or her to fit the culture, to be that type of individuals that will grow into my company, that is uh, flexible and has a communication and has the skill sets required for the job position that I'm asking for through the specification and the job description that he or she could do the, the job that I'm hiring him or her for. Okay, now compensations. You have different compensation systems. Total package of reward. Remember, like we talked about the total value. Here's your whole compensation. That it offers employees in return for their labor. Wages are paid for time work. You know, when I look at wages, it's job pays you ten dollars an hour. Salary, when I get paid by the salary, well you're looking at not paying by the hour, it's almost like I'm a contract. I bid for the job and just say George, when you give when I teach you as an adjunct, they give me a lump sum to teach this course to basically make sure you understand the function of HR or how all these different function and discipline works in this series that I'm uh, uh, teaching uh, presently organizational behavior, okay? That are uh, making 100,000, uh, pay to achieve results, even that means working five hours one day, 15 the next, or uh, many hours the following, okay? Now the next one is incentive programs. Remember, incentive programs are legal as long as it's fair and everyone has ability to uh, be able to succeed if they're tied to that uh, incentive. Okay, so incentive programs, Specialized compensation programs designed to motivate high performance. Bonus, similar to that, individual performance, incentive made of payments. Remember, I'm live. Jeez. When I look at these, I read the book, I look at the overhead, I look at the uh, uh, instruction, and I try to compile this so you have everything in one PowerPoint. One, uh, one mind uh, concept map so you could see how all the pieces fit then you take the next thing and then uh, you'll get the whole total picture of everything you'll learn here with all the different conceptual maps in in 17 pages you have it all your whole book everything else you could go back and when you look at the concept maps once you learn it properly reading it not just by my maps, not just by lectures, not just by the integrated software, all these, experience everything else. And when you see these concept maps, you go, oh, those are triggers. Now I remember. Remember, just all this is involved in just a, a little word. It's almost like a file, a directory to a certain file. When I want to find something, I know that, and then all of a sudden it comes back to me. Okay? So merit pay. Sorry, I just wanted to throw in a little bit in here to let you know. Uh, individuals incentive link to compensation to performance and non-sale. Uh, performance for variable pay. Middle managers are rewarded for especially productive output. Remember, I don't make anything. I don't, according to my employees, but my compensation is how well my team does. The morale and everything else of the team and that they're also producing. I would have one of the largest offices with the smallest staff and I would outperform most of all the other offices with a smaller uh, number of individuals. And they're not all new or experienced employees. They're a balance. That means that you have a good manager 
real team, you have a good organizational, remember you have good planning, you have good communication, you have good motivational tool, all this is the only way you're going to output. Or you could do something like with Wells Fargo when they had their incentives and they basically, the only way you could get it if you cheated, lied, or did something that might have been not exactly truthful, like they opened up a lot of accounts. And that's basically the culture. That's how they set up the goals, knowing that there's no way they could do it. There's only so many market share. How could you get such a high percentage year after year? Something is going on here. Should have been a red flag. But they were, remember, the management also got compensated because the company as a whole uh, exceeded expectations of the shareholders, stockholders. And they received their bonuses or incentives. That's a catch-22. Okay, profit sharing. The profit sharing, here's what happened. I think Jewel, my brother works at Jewel uh, 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 Osco. Profit sharing, earn above capital level and distribute to employees. And profit sharing is good because if I don't make any profit, there's nothing to share. So a lot of companies have profit sharing after a certain uh, uh, plateau because they have to give back to the dividends, uh, you know, to the shareholders. They have to retain some earnings from their profits to, to help the organization grow. But they know after we take care of this basics, what's our requirement for our shareholders and the organization as a whole, the profits are left, we divide it among our employees. That's why I allow employees to make sure there's no theft or anything else because that cuts into my bottom line and cuts into my profit. Gain sharing is a reward for group productivity, employment, something like you're doing in my feasibility studies. You have individual goals, uh, a grade, and you'll have a team grade. Pay for knowledge plan. Encourage employees to learn new skills or become proficient at different jobs. Cross training. Go to school. Learn another thing. I'll pay for it. I'll give you the transfer. I'll do everything. You, you wouldn't believe how hard it is to get employees to do something out of their comfort zone. I would do it. Someone's paying for my doctor. Someone's paying, you know, where I worked at, they paid for my master. So that was a good. They paid for all my education. As long as I get a B, I'd get a, 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 a 90%, a, a 100%, a C. You know, that's how they worked. But it was money to help me. And that, 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 that helped me because I attained a master's at the company expense, I had to stay there for five years after I attained it, but that was something I couldn't afford on my own, and they encouraged it. They gave me time off, encouraged me to do that. And that was a transferable skill set. A lot of companies are paying for your education now. You're going to community college. Add it. There's something, I don't care what company you're at, you could always take your uh, associate degree to other uh, employments. You may not take the training, internal training you had at a company, because they may not... Uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, uh, not not a justify, but they may not uh, look at it in the same level as a traditional course or an accredited course. So they may not give you any credit for that. Okay? So I pay you to go to school or I give you time. You know, it doesn't have to be always cash. I give you time to go or a lot of time for the management. you you got to go to a leadership uh, a training that the, uh, the both community colleges had and they'll pay to go there and get your degree and give you time to go away from work and work there or give you even allow you to use some of the facilities at, uh, you know, computers or at, um, at your workplace to complete that. Okay. So you got that? Okay, real quick, we only got a few more. Oh, good. Uh, benefits programs, you know, benefits, you have compensation other than wages. And benefits, if you look at it, about 30 40% is the benefits. So if you're getting a, a dollar, another 30 cents is on uh, benefits, give or take, you know, a figure on that. So you're really making a dollar 30 an hour if you just add it on, just add. Uh, multiply 30 percent so if you're strictly leaving one company for another company just for pay look at that benefit package you may not pay for your education may not give you any health care may not give you any well it depends on the size of the company 50 over uh, they have to give with the uh, affordable care act this, uh, the law but you know look what else you're giving may, vacation may be only uh, a one day or may you know may no sick day all that is time that you are costs associated to you know benefits that you don't have to pay for out of your pocket Okay, uh, companies must offer you know social social security benefits, workman's comps. They also could provide uh, health, life insurance, uh, disability insurance, paid off vacations. Now, when they talk about cafeteria style benefits, I work. My wife may be working someplace else, and she got a good dental plan better than where I'm working at. So I don't need two dental plans. So basically, the cafeteria says, or I you know I don't have uh, I don't need a dental plan. I'm covered someplace else. They allow me to select plans which plans i want and at what level i want to pay for 
or I may say I don't want no planes and they'll just give me here's a cash payout you go get yourself you're no longer in our plan and that's not a really good idea unless you're covered by somebody else because remember a lot of organizations the reason they get the discounts on the plan is because they have so many employees involved in the plan and the economies of scales you'll uh, you, know, you know when you get a discount you'll get a discount for that plan uh, like when I uh, left the organization I was still working on the plan uh, even as a retiree working on the plan uh, with the organization so my rates were really low okay until that uh, benefit ran out okay so developing a workforce how do you develop it training Everyone's got training, internal, external. Take the training, it always looks nice on the resume, especially the company's paying. Some some trade, some job, you have to take the training on your own and you don't pay to just be, uh, to, to, to keep up with the qualification for that work. Remember, a lot of companies pay, a lot of companies don't. If you want the qualification, you have to do it. I have to take professional growth classes in my own discipline and when I was doing it, that's why I ended up teaching. So I got into the teaching aspect uh, was because uh, uh, it worked out well. I teach, I was teaching, so I was automatically uh, current in my discipline. And plus that found me another career option. And then the same thing when you look at consulting. Consultants are just teachers of uh, businesses. Now we teach you as a business here. And HR, HR is the one who makes, you know, they do a lot of training, you know, like uh, for sexual harassment and everything else. Global training for the organization dealing with the employee. Individual training, and if I'm looking at job specific, that's still done by my department or individuals within me. Okay, how to find a job where they're hired. Development, you know, uh, many uh, managers and professionals, the skills needed for both present and future. You know, that I help them with succession planning, or I, I say, hey, you need this going forward. And another way is look at what the, when the company's posting a job, external, internal, they post the same job. Man, I don't have the skills. They're looking for two years of associate degree, or they're looking for any kind of college. Well, may, go to school now. That's where you're going to school now. Don't wait till the job comes out. When the job comes out, it's too late. Somebody already got the job. By the time you go back to school, two, three, four years. So now's the time. You're one that's strategic looking forward. When I'm looking at someone that's going to school at night, here I'm looking. He or she's a self-starter. He or she's looking at the future. He or she wants to better himself. He or she is developing the skill set. He or she is, uh, one thing I have to uh, just add on. When you're taking the courses for the company to pay, don't take like a yoga class unless you can somehow tell the company it's for stress and you're going to managing. But you have to take something that's going to benefit the organization. Organization. If they're paying for it, they want that skill set that's going to benefit the organization. So they become, the organization as a whole, becomes stronger, more effective, more efficient. Okay? So you uh, you do want to always develop your employees. Because when the stockholder is looking at it, people invest in a company, how many of your managers, how many, what's the level of education your, your organization have? And HR is the one that uh, uh, makes sure which ones uh, are they're paying for and which courses or skills are needed for uh, certain job descriptions uh, depending on the specification especially if they don't have uh, uh, the workforce internally or externally uh, readily available remember they're looking in the next three or four years technology is coming in we got a new product line coming in because hr is involved in manufacturing in all the different departments so they know what's going on and they have to be in the future to prepare it so they're the one looking out researching everything you're learning in this course how to research and get information back okay so on the job training training sometimes informal conducted while employees are working sometimes informal you gotta be careful you uh, you know on the job training how much training a lot of times we do on the job training just to understand how the paperwork flows so then when you take the formal training you have already been exposed you may not know exactly what this thing did why I did it but you have an idea how it fits otherwise I'm giving you too much and you it's too much for anyone to grasp in a short period of time depending on the skill sets or the uh, the job training required so it, there's no right or wrong way it depends on the organization after a while uh, HR said this is what works for this uh, group this doesn't work for this group we have to do training this way or we have to have on the job training first or whatever or some mixture of all and that's what makes the job very interesting you you have your input your skill set is about people what do you think works? You talk to managers, talk to individuals, and now you could you bring that to the table. Okay, off the job training that's usually expensive. It means training, conduct in a controlled environment, but you don't think about the work. You're not running, looking at your desk or your phone, but you're not at work. You're not productive. 
not making any money. So someone has to do your work. So that has to be very focused, very detailed. Why would I send you off to training? Or you can have distance learning where you have an online or something like you're doing with some of the interactive uh, computer software that you're doing with the publisher. Similar there. Remember, the publisher, uh, academic is one aspect of their market. The other one is also businesses. And some of the publishers also do training and everything else for companies uh, very specific for their needs. Okay, vegetable training is basically an on hands, uh, off the job training, conducting a simulated uh, environment. I think when you learn how to drive, you go on there, or, right? You know what I mean? It's like in a computer, uh, but before they put you behind a real car. Okay, performance appraisal. It defines performance standards for employee managers, then observes and uh, uh, the employee's performance. Here's my standard. Are you making? Are you performing to what I hire you for? And I understand there's a learning curve. So for each job, some engineers, I think it's like a two-year learning curve. In six months, you should be able to do so much. In uh, one year, a little bit more. In the second year, I start giving you more of the complex uh, jobs or the, the more of a complex uh, uh, clientele if you're in sales or the more of a, a complex uh, work uh, uh, if you're a direct or a field supervisor or a manager. Okay? So, uh, observe performance, example, uh, figures. And here's just uh, one real quickly. Supervisor, outstanding, good. Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, some of the individuals put in the zero. A lot of times, uh, those of you who do surveys, I, uh, yeah, I like to either uh, forget the odd number, just make it even. You have to go one way or the other. This one, everyone, everyone's average. Remember, when you're performing, everyone's average. They're not going to uh, put a work if you put everyone above and uh, exceeds the highest it could ever uh, uh, substantial. Oh, uh, one, sorry, you're going to make sure which way the graph is going. You're rating your individuals. One is uh, uh, outstanding. If you rate everyone as one, and that could happen in the team, everyone got all A's, everyone got uh, the exceeds expectation, <coughs> your output should reflect that. If you're a poor performer, your, your whole team or your department is underperforming poorly to other departments how could you rate all your employees that outstanding Oop. then they do the force ranking that's what you learn in uh, if you take me or other instructors in the uh, human relationship okay all right so new challenges what are new challenges workforce diversity like it or not range of workers attitudes beliefs behaviors different by gender race age ethnicity physical yeah, you know, other relevant ca characteristics. Many. Uh, uh, okay, when I look at all this, just look at your classroom. I got people short, tall, large, uh, vertically challenging, horizontally challenged, uh, speakers, quiet, uh, introverts, extroverts, uh, uh, Polish, Ukrainian, Russian, uh, Hindu, you name it, Middle Eastern, you, you know, I mean, Saudi Arabia, uh, from Iran, you name it, we have it, Germany, everything. We're very diverse. I'm an instructor, I'm a teacher. I'm a manager. I'm an employee. I have to learn how to work with different individuals. Remember, that's the strength of this nation. People try to say, how does the United States always pop up, come up with these new ideas? <clears throat> how does the United States come up with these creative ideas? They come and try to uh, mirror us, look at us. And where do they find out? We have such a diversity. But all that diversity, it's like all these different forces fighting against each other, or not you know, working kind of against each other. Maybe they don't communicate it. You as uh, HR, how do I bring them in? How do I introduce them to the organization? How do I introduce them to the culture? How do I introduce the culture to a new culture, a new individual coming in that we never had? Maybe we never had a Polish person. Maybe we never had a Chinese individual. I'm not saying this wrong, remember? Because individuals, you know, neighborhood demographics change, and you know, you have another individual. How do I talk with somebody, uh, you know what I mean? I may not understand that individual. HR, you make both of them feeling, you try to find that, and you do the training and workshop. So when you, uh, you know, you're the one up there to make sure everyone in the culture understands or if we're changing the direction or culture of our company, why are we bringing an individual? Look, as a marketing guy, when I was managing engineering, I drove them nuts. They are very detailed. I'm just, hey, it's close enough. <laughs> I'm not building a nuclear plant. I'm just doing, you know, I'm managing. And in management, people aren't black and white. I'm not talking about the ethnicity or color. You know, when I'm saying black and white, there's a, in a gray area. You know, you can't say, here's the rules. You know, certain rules, uh, uh, sexual harassment, discrimination, poop, you know, a fighting or, or threat out of the job. Fired right off. Theft. 
But a lot of things, you know, maybe interpret the individual didn't understand that. So HR is the one that's kind of clarified. Maybe I got to clarify the training. Maybe I got to clarify the training of the manager. Maybe I got to clarify more training, how to train the employee so they understand the manager. Vice versa, human resource involved in the training that globally keeps the organization together. You're the glue to make sure all these other processes. You, know, you have to understand them. You're not, I'm not talking a specific job. I'm talking overall the culture of the organization. You hire, you find them, so you, you take care of them. Okay, knowledge workers. Employees who are of value because of knowledge you possess. HR ensures proper training to keep them current pay scale. And that's also with, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, maintaining their credentials. You know, just because I hired you with the credentials, do you have to be recertified or whatever? Okay, you're basically, are the, the, we already went to the chart, so to those of you who haven't, you can look at it. Okay, I'm not going to go into the detail on this. I'm already a little bit over my, I, I think I got about like 10 more minutes before my hour is up. Okay, contingent worker. Sometimes other than pr a permanent worker or full-time basis, independent contractors, that's why I consider myself uh, uh, as an adjunct. Uh, I'm basically a contractor. I've got my uh, you know, salary by, uh, by contract per semester. Uh, even though I got some rights and some benefits as an adjunct, uh, you know, I have to belong to some associations at both community colleges. But I look at myself as an independent contractor. I'm not going to work this semester. I don't take it. Uh, I'll buy the salary to make sure you, you know, you get, look, when you got an independent contractor or your full-time employee uh, or instructors, you get the same quality uh, thing. That's why the train, that's why HR, everyone's trained the same way. You get the same thing. You know, I just uh, have a different background. My, my employment relationship with the company is different. When I outsourced it at, uh, when I was working in the corporate and when I outsourced, when they came in, they had the comment badge, everything else. They wouldn't know their employee unless they look at the ID, ID card and it says contractor, but they give the same service, same requirements, had to follow the same rules, same procedures, follow all the same uh, acts and everything else as my full-time employee, if anything else, to do if they ended up doing more because they know hey my contract's up you gotta rehire my full time say i'm here i'm happy what the heck remember different ways of managing but you still from hr they all have to work together and you may even be doing some training to make sure that they are trained to the specification of your organization okay and part-time workers, uh, you know, uh, when I'm saying part-time working, that's a lot of it might have done with the uh, Affordable Care Act, you know, 50 or more, you paid a, a penalty or you paid insurance. And look, remember, this part of a, a HR, if you're going into HR as a discipline, make sure you understand the Affordable Care Act, not only from the employee's perspective, but for the penalties from the organization. They're gonna ask you information, HR, should we go into the Affordable Care Act? Uh, Ethical HR uh, uh, managers say yes, that's the best thing for the employees. We're over f 50, and an ethical one say, okay, maybe if we just hire more part time, we don't hit that 50, we don't have to worry about the Affordable Care Act. Or the penalty is lower than paying them out and giving to them. Remember? But you as an HR has to look at you know, the moral value, uh, uh, core, or the compass of the, uh, of the organization. That's my perspective. You know, author kind of went on. When you go into that, HR is the one that tries to uh, that everyone's playing fairly, and that it, uh, and still looking out for the uh, for the organization. But you're looking out for the organization to the employees' uh, uh, eyes, both management and uh, salary workers. Okay, dealing with labor. This was pretty good. Just labor unions. You know, group of individuals growing, and you know they say the numbers are uh, dropping down in labor unions. You know, uh, and a lot of unions are basically for what they call a blue collar worker. You know, the ones working manufacturing. Now they don't call them unions; they call themselves associations. They're still unions, same uh, bylaws and everything else. But so the numbers have dropped down. Why would the numbers have dropped down? Look, the only reason I would join a union or association is if the management is not treating me fair. Because of all the laws and all the penalties, if the management is treating me fairly, why would I want to join a union? I paid them, what did they give me in return? Well, you're a union, but big deal, I don't care. If they're treating me wrong, 
if they're abusing me, if they're not paying my wages, if I'm working in an unsafe condition, if they're discriminatory and I can't prove it, remember an employee, then the unions will come in. They have a strong foothold in there. Once they're in, remember, you have to certify them, and there's a whole process the author talked about. Take the management, uh, I mean, the HR class, we go into a little more uh, information. Or you could also, you know, you could bring the union in. You could also divorce or decertify uh, through a procedure and uh, take the union out. It happens. You know, you may bring another union, just to, the union's worse than, uh, uh, you know, some of the unions are, uh, may not be as helpful to the employee as they should, or what the employee feels. Okay, labor relations, process of dealing with employees who are representative of the union. I like you with dealing with the union. You know, not that I came out of the union, it's easy. Here's a contract, you violate a contract, you didn't violate the contract, I don't have to do individual job appraisals or, or, or anything else with every one of my engineers or my uh, direct reports. Here it is, here's the rules. And a lot of times it's not me violating, it's my direct report. Look. If your direct report that you violated, don't try to rip them off. You you get distrust between the union and management, and it's hard to bring that trust back. I got the contract. I messed up. You pay it. I'm sorry. I paid a fine. It won't happen again. Whatever. And that's how you uh, get a, a working with the labor. Not trying to second guess them or trying to undermine them, and that's the same side from the union. Work with your management. You have people, and some people are just uh, rebel risers. Get the individuals that are going to elect in those positions, both uh, from the union that are level-headed and are looking out for the best of the union and the organization. Look, if you get it to uh, raises too high and the company goes under, everyone loses. You have to look where they're at, and we'll talk about certain of the wages down the road. Okay, so the number of percentage of the unions have been dropping and I uh, explained that collective bargaining is process with labor and management negotiates conditions of employment function represented by workers I've been on both sides in the labor a negotiation is interesting and if you ever get a chance it's very unique and interesting experience they yell they scream and what I found out a lot of things are still done often little small breakouts uh, it, it amazes me you know you always ask for the for the sky but I'm, I'll be happy with uh, 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 some ground here Aim high, management aim low, and then you try to find they're going to talk about that bargaining zone. Now well, let's get into it. it. Just falls in here. So here's the bargaining zone: employers' maximum limit, employers' expectation what they have, employers' desired result. Remember, unions minimum limit expectation. And some look when you look at it, you look at the overall package. You're not going to get everything. But you can get majority of that. And the next union contract, or get your foot into a negotiation. We never had this. Get your foot in here. You know, when they did uh, uh, incentive ray, uh, pay, they got in there with flexible people, learned it, and then they started changing as you go on. But you got to get in. Both have to agree on it. So make it simple, and then you have something to grow for different negotiations. Okay? And then contract issues is cost of living. That's usually tied into the consumer price index. You know, looks at the 400 or 500, I forget what it is, uh, items you have to buy in the area. And coal, uh, cost of living. So if the consumer price index goes up, you uh, uh, get a cost of living associated with that. A lot of companies are getting rid of this, especially more for uh, uh, retirement. You know, Social Security is still in there. And the reason is because it's always, you know, uh, if the cost of living because of inflation or an employee goes up, I'm paying higher. I'm indirectly paying my uh, uh, adjusting their wages. I'm not saying, remember, we're talking this from a, a company's perspective, uh, from an employee that's, uh, that, that works out well for me. I don't mind that. But, you know, so that's part of negotiating. You have to look at it. You know, I'm looking for management has to be, to, uh, be able to explain the, the rationale, not just we don't want to give you no money. We don't have the money. Or uh, maybe down the road, but here's it's hurting us. It's, uh, we only have so much. We have to make a profit. We're, and, you know, remember, when you look at the negotiation, uh, especially in the unions, they have access to all my books, just like uh, you know, to see that I'm not making up the story. I don't have any money hidden, so they have their accountants looking at the books also. Okay, now wage reopen. Now this is kind of good when you're in a situation because you have to uh, take a wage cut or no promotion. Say hey. We will open up, depending on what happens in the environment. If the economy changes, I'll pay you more. If it drops down, yeah, we have to open up because we can't pay you. We have to renegotiate. Uh, we're, we're in a survival mode. People understand the ship is sinking. You know, oh, I don't care. I want this. Hey, we're going down together. None of us win. So let's try to uh, stop the flooding and try to bring it back up. But now the ship is seaworthy and 
and effective and it's making money, that's when you say, hey, let's renegotiate. We got to come back to the table. We're doing better. And, and from a company perspective, don't try to rip them off. You know, they helped you out, cut their wages, didn't take their wages to make you successful, the organization. And now you want to go back up and uh, uh, represent, uh, give back to them. And HR has to be the reminder. Say, this is a fair thing. This is an equitable thing. This is what's going to keep the morale of the individual. This is what's going to give them ideas. They're not going to work against us. They're going to work with us. And that's how the organization uh, will thrive going forward. Okay? And when bargaining, union tactics, real quickly, I'm just going to go into strike, you know, to just walk off, boycott, if they don't buy my products. There's different clauses and restrictions. Take the author, uh, talk a little bit about them. Uh, but those are the main ones, so, you know, work slow down. Sometimes I don't know if they're on the slow down. I, I'm only kidding. Now look at the work slow down or a strike. Uh, American, uh, Illinois Bell, when they were Illinois Bell, they went on a strike and everything else, so they brought the management individuals in here, and I think they have someplace else, some management tactics, uh, where they bring in sti strike breakers, or in this case, they uh, brought in man uh, 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 management, uh, hired workers as permanent or management. In this case, uh, uh, Illinois Bell basically had their managers doing the work. And while they were doing the work, they realized, hey, they had lesser individuals, but they're trained. They're, you know, the managers did the, did the job before and worked their way up. And so they did the work and everything else, and they realized, hey, man, we're doing as much work, if not more. They're compensating and everything else than our regular workforce. When they came back to negotiation, they settled for the pay, but they reduced their workforce by 20% because they realized we didn't need all these people. They found a job in the areas where they could uh, be more efficient because they had to have no choice, and they did the process change. So they got the raises, but some workers uh, uh, you know, uh, might have lost their job depending who's doing the, the work and if they could maintain it. Remember, when you go as a strike, just on the other side, managers should always inform them, you should, you no longer have any benefits, you no longer have any insurance, you have nothing. You're just like you're not working, you said I'm not working, why would I pay you all those, I don't have my benefits, wait a minute, I, uh, I get my health care, my medical, uh, don't I get those? Nope, you're on a strike, it means you said I'm not working anymore, and I'm not paying you no more, and benefits are part of your compensation package. Okay, so lockouts, now what is management? Uh, uh, where workers are denied access to the employment side breakers, you bring people in. And usually when it comes to negotiation, you know, some people, even with the union, not supposed to cross the picket line, but they have to because of financial aid, so they come in and management will either give them something, let, let them work. But when it comes to negotiation, the union wants those individuals fired or they want to kick them out of the union. So management's working both ways. Say, hey, they came in there because of this rationale. That's where HR gets involved. Again, they're trying to say, hey, they did what they had to do for family reasons and trying to work with the union. And that's part of the negotiations. Uh, uh, how do I handle individuals uh, that cross, uh, cross the picket line by the union? Okay, now mediation. Look at mediation as a marriage counselor. Method of resolving labor disputes in which a third party suggests but does not impose a settlement. In arbitration, look at it as a judge. He or she a method of resolving labor disputes in which both parties agree to submit the judgment of a neutral party. Hey, we did it all. I think I did it under an hour. I think I got five minutes. Okay, so what do we did today? Remember, today this is a general overview of everything we covered. We talked about what HR management is, HR planning. You got the high level. Take the course. There's another course. It's a 16-week course or an eight-week course uh, at the community college. They will go into more detail about the laws. They'll go into more detail about job description and how to do the resources. They'll do more detail about the compensation package. They'll do more detail. On, uh, trust me, I, know, I, I, I teach the courses. And this way you have a, a, a... Here you understand it, how it fits into the overall in the organizational behavior. If you open up a new business, you should have a policy. You should have all these acts and policies some kind of procedure uh, so individuals know, you know a handbook employee handbook and a lot of them when you take the course to show you how to get a generic so they understand you know how do you fire what's the proper way of firing what's the proper way of uh, 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 reprimanding or what should I look out for as not to get the federal government looking after me all right so we covered a lot development of workforce remember this is a quick nut uh, uh, overview uh, I hope this helped uh, uh, read the book, look at the concept maps, uh, do the homework, do it integrative, and you're ready for the next uh, lecture. So I'll see you uh, next week uh, for our next, uh, you know, for, for the next session. And enjoy. And remember, management uh, HR is a good.
place to start off if you're a people's person, uh, a good listener, a calm individual, a rational thinker, one that could read nonverbal, one that listens to both sides, and one that brings people together. You know, some of us had the skill set. You know, playground. There's one kid always comes up. Wait, let's not fight. Let's all be friends. Let's uh, let's think about this. That's the individual. This is your calling. Uh, human resources uh, in an organization. Again, so I'll see you later on. My name is Dr. George Machaki, and thank you for watching this video. I hope it's helpful.